Welcome to a early weekend AMA. For those of you who are new to the channel, every week I try to do a one hour live stream, answer your guys' questions, and try to provide some, some value. And um, while everyone funnels in, I usually have a topic. And today is something that's been happening to me more and more recently. Um, is I've been getting complimented on my work and on like some of my work ethic and I don't know if you guys suffer from this but I really don't have any good responses when it happens uh, <laughs> so uh, you know it's one of those things where hey you're doing a great job blah 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 what do you say back or you know thanks for doing this I, I, I have no idea what the hell to say back to these things I really don't and it's something I think I need to. I need to have a better answer. I was like, sure, that was out of blue, but thanks. <laughs> or like, of course. Like, um, you should be okay and feel comfortable with, you know, family, friends, team members complimenting you on your success. Um, because it does mean that they're looking out and they're keeping their eyes noticed. And they're, oh, this guy's doing something well. This girl's doing something well. I know for me, man, I just feel so uncomfortable. I don't know why. Um uh, it's just been uh, one of those things in my life where I've never quite been okay with someone saying, good job, Dylan. Especially in the workforce. The workforce is a very strange place to be. Um, you know, on YouTube, and that's fine, but, like, people you see on a day-to-day -day basis, that's a whole different thing. I don't I don't know what, what that's about, to be honest. Um but it's something I'm going to work on. And the reason I bring it up, it's not only so that you get better at it, but um, when you do see that you have some shortcomings in maybe your personality or your... I think it, I think it extends, it comes from being somewhat of an introvert, right? And as we grow, we need to, we need to make note of things that maybe we're not doing as well with and maybe we're not... Uh, killing it as much but i thought that was kind of funny and it's sort of has been happening uh, a couple times and it's happened a couple times in my career not just recently um uh, my last boss uh asked me both my last bosses how do you get so much done how did you ramp up so quickly so i was like i don't know dude i'm just legit no <laughs> i get better answer than that but it was always one of those things where i felt very uncomfortable um how you doing young buddha the young Buddha, not to be confused with the old Buddha, the legendary Buddha. Um, yeah, I got uh, I got plans this weekend, so we're doing the the AMA a little bit early, a little bit sooner, a little bit, um, a little bit right now. Uh, so, um, got some cool talks going on. So like. Um, this is something that has sort of started happening this year is people have been interested in my content and my courses and um, <clears throat> and so uh, I'm in talks with a couple organizations about leasing them on their platform uh, which is kind of cool um, so uh, is web development slash coding slash programming the same thing I would say coding and programming are the same thing but web development is a specific area of expertise Um, so in, in the sense you're going to be coding and programming with web development, but, uh, it's like saying is mobile development the same as coding and programming. Not really because mobile development is a specific niche while coding programming is more general. It's not incorrect. It's just, they're not the same thing. Um, And it's hot. I don't know what it is about my office. Even with this fan in here, it gets so hot. Where's that edge? I think it's my computer. I think it's all the equipment in here. Um, yeah. You know what I've been doing while I work is I throw um, uh, Joshua Fluke's live stream up <laughs> in the background. Enjoy it to listen while I'm working. It's kind of nice. Hey, 
Hey, Dylan, I'm trying to implement an email account creation form into a 3D web page. I am I am building and any looking for advice. Uh, do you have any tips for me? Well, uh, first off, uh, my understanding of email web forms, they are there's quite a few compatibility issues. I'd make sure that you tackle those and make sure. I think there's three main types. I don't remember what they are. Watch a whole talk on email compatibility. Um, so that would be what I would do first. And uh, in terms of the 3D web page, good luck. I, I got I got no, no clue on that sort of stuff. You got my... Oh, you like the course? So uh, Abalanchi says dog. D-A-W-G. So you know he's legit. Uh, I <laughs> I got this course. He's talking about the 100 uh, front end uh, questions course interview. F the 100 front end interview questions course that uh, you can get for ten dollars in the description below. Um, says I'm shocked at how much I don't know. What a nice course. Well done. Thank you, man. That course is really there to fill in those gaps and to help you pass. And you know what? It's it's funny. It's um I know it's called the 100 because that's kind of my thing, right? I did the 100 algorithm challenge and I did the 100 front end. I got I, I got a couple of other 100 courses in the uh, in the works that I haven't really got to quite yet. Um but eventually I eventually I will. Um but there's more than 100 things on there and it's it's going to continue to to grow right and continue and what's cool about it is like someone asked a question like hey what about symbols are symbols primitives and i was just thinking about like as this course continues to grow i'll go ahead and update that because i didn't talk about symbols you don't really need to know about symbols uh it's not something you're ever really going to use but hey you want to know let me go ahead and update this so that you can uh get you know get up to date do i know who matt tran and seth himes are matt and i go about 20 years back we're boys uh, Seth Himes is one of his business partners for his digital marketing course. So, yes, I do know who that is. My first day is Monday as a junior front end dev. Any advice? Yes. Um, you know, go out to lunch for the first couple days with your coworkers, make, make connections, um, sort of see how things work before you start giving input. I'd also say expect for the next three months for you to, your whole job is to keep that job. And so what that means is you need to go home, you need to study the things that you need to study. I'd also then go and recommend that you read these two books in this order. I, um, so, and there's links for these books in the description below. I'd highly recommend you read the cl uh, Clean Code, which is gonna teach you how to write better software. And I highly recommend the Clean Coder, which is gonna teach you how to be a professional. So those are two books that I'd recommend that everyone read, regardless where they are at in their career. So. I'm glad you like the course though. That course, man. So like people are like, I didn't put a video out really this week because I, I was hustling to get this course out by this week and I, I burnt myself out. So I'm a little bit burnt out. And so I'm taking a week or two off YouTube and I'll, I'll jump back into it. But I always want to make sure I do the live streams. The live stream is hour. You're done. You enjoy yourself. You, you know, say hello. How are you? You know, <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that course was a lot of fun. And um, I'm debating if I want to do a Angular course in the same fashion. Um, I have a, a more high level one, which is about like um, similar to if you've ever seen my Code Like a Pro series where I go over higher level things or I want to cover 100 higher level things. Um, so I think in that course I cover 12 or 15 or something like that. Um, we'll see. We'll see. Um, right now I'm not building another course for a while. Yeah. My hair looks small. Who says that to somebody, man? What's that about? Um, have ever taken any freelance front end project? I just took some WordPress way back in the day. Um, would I recommend it? Not really. So it's funny. A lot of people want to freelance right when they're getting started, but to really freelance, you have to kind of be already be a senior dev to do it right. Um, halfway through the hundred algorithm course, I hope you like it, man.
Would you consider Seth Himes the best career teacher of all time? I don't know necessarily about that. His course gets people 60K jobs within a month without a degree or experience. So within a month, I, I would say that's probably on the high end. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. But it's also like saying, is free code camp the best online boot camp period? Because I, two years later, make six figures. I don't know. That's sort of a, you know. Does it help you? Your hair looks small. I, I did get a haircut. I've also had my headphones on all day, so I have this nice, like, little divot right here going on, you know. If anyone's ever worn headphones all day. Um, so I just got off work about 20 minutes ago, so I've been working with my headphones on. Does coding have a lot of potential for remote lifestyle? Yes. Uh, once you have about three, four years experience, you can get hired remote relatively easily. Um, one one great thing that Joshua Flukes always harping about, because everyone wants to know about remote, and he makes an excellent point, is that the best way to get a remote job <laughs> is to take a job that's not remote and then just transition it to remote. Um, you know, you start easy. Like, hey, you know, I want to take this job, and a lot of devs do this. Hey, uh, I'm really interested in your role, but are, is it is it possible that we can work out two days remote? And they say, yeah, sure. You know, uh, Monday, Friday, we'll discuss the days. We're, we have flexible schedule, <laughs> and then you take that role. Um. Uh, so, um, you know, here, here, you, and then you know, you say, hey, what do you think about doing three days? Then you just transition to full time. <laughs> I'd learn C sharp over C plus plus, so that's just me. If you're looking for a C, C type language, <clears throat> what company do I currently work for? Um, I I don't mind telling you, but when you when you work with, so I work for the uh, one of the big four auditing companies, uh, one of the largest firms in the world. Uh, but I don't speak for them, and so I don't necessarily... If you want to go find out, you can go find out on LinkedIn, but I work for a very large company. What programming languages besides PHP and JavaScript have I used in my career? Uh, a little bit of C-sharp.net, uh, but mainly just JavaScript, TypeScript. That's all I need. <laughs> I used PHP in my first job, um, <laughs> but after that, I never took I never touched PHP again. Uh, one, JavaScript pays better typically, and two, I didn't really like it. Uh, no. Programmers won't get replaced by AI in our lifetime. And thoughts on 5G internet? Hey, man, who doesn't want faster wireless internet? I know that uh, a lot, if 5G becomes sort of a, a staple and is, is it's fast enough that you could probably get rid of your cable provider, <clears throat> which means that certain cities have better internet and c certain locations are easier to have higher in internet. Like, for me, I need internet for my job. I need internet for my side work, my side hobbies. Um, but other than like a live stream, I probably could do just fine. Um, I don't really want to talk about my current job, um, interview practice. It's, they probably wouldn't like that. Does TypeScript play nicely with various testing frameworks? Yes. Um, now, depending on your framework of choice, uh, you, usually they'll have like Angular or Vue or React. Um, I've done it in Vue and I've done it in uh, Angular. I haven't done it in React, but I imagine it's the same. Their CLI will already have it all set up for you if you want to use TypeScript. Um, and, uh, you know, it just compiles. It's just JavaScript, right? And so what it does is it just compiles it down, compiles your JavaScript into the test. So if you ever want to see what it actually looks like, um, in Angular, anyhow, you can com 
you can actually open up localhost 9876, throw a debugger in your test, open up the inspector in the Chrome browser, and you can see exactly what's it, what the actual output is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but here's the thing is the testing stuff with Angular is just Jasmine. You can use Jasmine with, with regular JavaScript. All it does is compile it. You just have to set up Webpack to compile it. That's all. Now, um, there are other testing frameworks that... Because all, all, all you need to do is make sure that your TypeScript compiles to JavaScript, then it runs the test. Uh, I typically use JavaScript for my... Um, Jesus Christ. I'm sick of hearing about fucking digital marketing. Uh, uh, I use JavaScript, man. I'm a JavaScript dev. Inside and out. Inside and out. I bleed yellow. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Why does IBM have a bad rap for devs? Does it? Did I use JavaScript for my Google interview? Yeah. I don't know. I think probably the truth lies that um, when it comes to developers, a lot, a lot of these larger legacy companies that's sort of what uh, what I really think of when it comes to uh, I, I when I, when you think about the, like these older tech companies, I think of them as legacy projects almost. And there's a lot of things when it comes to developers that like developers are slowly developers are slowly becoming one of those things where they're more and more normal people um and you have these older companies that they don't really they played ball one way and now that they need to play ball another and it doesn't always you know they don't always like that um that'd be my guess so i haven't i haven't watched the vox documentary on ibm but like here's the thing is why would you go work at ibm if if they have a a bad corporate a corporate like if they're known for being shitty at devs, why would you go work for them? There's plenty of jobs out there, especially, especially right now. Um, you know, the first thing I do when I decide if I want to move forward with the interviews, I look up the company on Glassdoor. That's the very first thing I do. And it's a little bit harder. So, like, at larger companies like IBM, right? it's a little bit harder because it's not necessarily going to be IBM's culture. It's going to be more like a, de a department culture. Uh, well, for the first job, yeah, who cares? First job, you could be in, you know, Afghanistan or, or North Korea. Go take it, work six months and get the hell out. You're not supposed to stay at your first job longer than a year anyhow. A testing you demo course that'd be part of the code like a pro course but um yeah it'd probably be pretty good talk about things like um abstraction talk about things like creating mocks the uh how to utilize the dependency inversion principle with your testing um how to write proper unit tests so like th these are things that i i talk about sometimes with my team members Have you grown accustomed to Florida to the point where you probably won't move out of state for another developer position now? Um, no, no. We'll, we're, we plan on leaving Florida eventually. Um, April and I are going to start considering having kids in about two years. And we'll probably want to be closer to home when that happens. You know, um, We have friends here, but family's on the, on the West Coast. And we're, we want a little bit colder weather. Um, we've always wanted to live in this, like an area that snows. And, uh, if you know anything about Florida, it doesn't snow. Uh, so, uh, 
Um, we'll probably about two years from now, maybe three, move out of Florida. Right now, I'm saving a lot of money to buy an apartment complex. So, probably probably taking about two, three years to save the the amount of money I want to save, about a hundred thousand dollars. And um, when we relocate, uh, now whether it'll be a different position. Um, I don't know. My company is large enough that they have like 50 different locations. And so I can go pretty much anywhere as long as they, they don't mind me working remote or they, they don't mind me uh, transferring to another team. So um, when the time comes, that'll be a, a conversation I end up having. But you never know. Um, if things are going so well here, there it's one of those things where like, you know, I've I've had, you know, say say I get promoted and they're like, hey, we need you here. Uh, and you get promoted to tech lead or something like that. And, you know, making 30, 40 more grand. It's like, all right, I guess I'll stay in Florida. <laughs> you know, it, it just, uh, it's one of those items where, um, it just sort of depends. Um, but yeah, no, I'll, um, I don't mind Florida. It got, so here's Florida. Florida has served the exact purpose. So when I came to Florida, when I told April, hey, I'm going to Florida, um, I told her this is what I was going to accomplish by moving 3,000 miles away. One, I'm going to get resume experience. I, I We've always had a five-year plan for Florida, and we're in year three right now. We just wrapped up. We're about to wrap up year three, which is crazy to think, by the way. It's crazy for me to think that three years ago, I was having my mother bring me groceries to now – I have a nice house, money in the bank, life is good. It's To me, it just f blows my mind. Um, doubled my salary. If we were to take my – I've tripled my salary from my very first job at $45,000. Um, uh, tripled my cash, I should say. Um, and then uh, lowered my cost of living, all this. It's craziness, right? Um, so – We've been here three years. I had a five-year plan. In five years, not only did I want to, this is what I wanted to accomplish. I wanted to get resume experience. I wanted to grow my salary, and I wanted to buy a house, and then I was going to have an investment property when I left. That was my my goal. Now, uh, the house I bought is in a has a HOA, and it's in a, a gated community, all that sort of stuff. So probably not an investment property just for rents, but it could go up in value. Um, something I'll probably hold on to. Uh, Florida's been one of the most immigrated states too for 2019 and 2018. So they're building a ton around here. We'll see if the houses go up. Might sell it when we go. But you know, so we've accomplished all that. I came to Florida, other than for the first dev job, because lower cost of living and less traffic. The two things that were driving me absolutely insane in California. So I got, I got, <laughs> I swear to God, I got a call from Google. Uh, it might have been yesterday, uh, two days. It was either yesterday or the day before. And the guy says to me, the recruiter says to me, he's like, hey, we really like you. I was like, cool. Um, and he's like, um, would you be interested in working at Google? I, th I said, I think every developer is interested at working at Google. He's like, all right, um, you know, what areas are you targeting? And I name, I was like, well, these are the areas. And he's like, well, what do you, what do you think about the Bay Area? I was like, in Southern California? I was like, nah, I'm good. Like, <laughs> he's like, you sure? This is, I was like, Google couldn't pay me enough to live in San Francisco. Um, Not even remotely interested in working in the Bay Area. Um, hey, have you been a fan? Hey, I've been a fan for two years recently. Now, my first job is a full stack developer. I just want to say thank you for the grind and info because it helped me a lot. Good on you, Cody, man. Good on you. Keep up the good work, man. Uh, would I, if I was going to interview you for a dev role, uh, I probably wouldn't even focus on data structure algorithms. I make him sound sketchy? No, man. It's just a recruit. So, first off, all recruiters are sketchy, even the ones that work for Google, because, um, you know, they're skin peddlers, as, uh, as uh, Chris Hawks likes to say, um, which is a fantastic name. I love that name. Um, secondly, you should always be suspect of what any recruiter tells you. Just like, because they're a salesperson. 
You ever had someone? You ever had a used car salesman? Same thing. They're the same people. Except they're trying to sell you on a job. Yeah, no. Um, yeah. I'll probably be... I, so, there's a financial reason for me to stay at, at my current company for five years. So, five years. Uh, I have... Let's see. Uh, five years, my 401k vest, and at five years, my, um, wealth building account, which essentially is free money that's put into account, that's a portion of my, um, in, put into an investment account. So, um, if I had to guess how much money would be at five years, would probably be, uh... Around somewhere between seventy five thousand and a hundred thousand dollars I would uh lose out on if I, I left before five years. Um so there's a financial and I I I'm happy. I like what I do. I I work remote a couple days a week. I like my boss. My boss uh, um is is a very intelligent guy and he's a good dev, which is hard to find from directors a lot of times. Yeah, you know what bothers me more than anything else with these recruiters is they have the audacity to 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 act like they know what it's like to study for some of these exams. Um, and it's like, bro, you you couldn't even write a function that added two numbers together, and you're gonna send me, you're gonna send me, fifteen blogs, hundreds of algorithm prep, a couple books, a couple videos. It's like, bro, I'm good. I don't even want to study for it, your shit. Why am I gonna spend? Why am I gonna spend three months studying algorithms and data structures to go live and work in a city I don't want to work in? Um. No, nah, I'm good. Yeah, I, I did hear that there is <laughs> there's poop on the street since in San Francisco. Uh I have uh Yeah, I have friends who who work in San Francisco and it's a little bit crazy. You own all my Udemy courses, including the latest one, hopefully. It's my largest course yet. Yeah. Uh, I've been meaning to go through my algorithm. I think this weekend that might be what I, I do. I, I wanted to update my algorithm course to add some additional stuff. Some people were upset that I linked to a... Um, I linked to a uh, TypeScript video on YouTube instead of putting a TypeScript video on there. So I think I'm just going to go and put the type TypeScript uh, video on there. Yeah, no, I, well, here's the thing is the average house, the median house in San Francisco is 1.2 million, 1.2 million, 1.2 million for the same thing that everybody else has. That's probably not that great. Um, I'm good. No, thank you. How long does it take you to put together a Udemy course? Um, it depends, man. This last one took me about three months of working on it nonstop. The perks big techs give are so stupid. Nice. Okay. I see here's here's one of the things where I'm sort of morally against forcing front end developers to learn data structures and algorithms. Um is is that I I don't Part of the reason I hated college, part of the reason I hated college is learning things that you don't need to learn, learning things that you don't need to do. Um, and that's not something you need for the front end. It just isn't. 
And so I don't want to waste my time studying those things. But because here's the thing, if you take the time to study and prep for this sort of crap, there's an opportunity cost. That whole course, I could spend the same time, effort, and energy on that course that I just released as for studying for a potential something. I just don't have any passion to study anything I don't want to. So Facebook changes your oil while you're parked at work. Woo! Yeah. Um, data structure algorithms mainly for the back end? I, I would say yes. Um, you don't really need them. Because, so you don't really need to worry about efficiency on the front end. You shouldn't be manipulating large sets of data like that. I here I'll tell you another thing. Unless you're Google or Microsoft, I won't even take your algorithm challenge anymore. I don't care what you're paying, what you're allegedly paying. If you send me an algorithm challenge, because I I have a lot a lot so there's so for whatever reason in certain cities, uh, codality challenges and hacker rank challenges they like to send it to you uh, before they even interview you. To see if the, if you're the right fit and whatnot, I won't take them. I'm good. I have enough experience. I don't need a job, and I don't think I don't think you're entitled to two hours of my time. A lot of these things are two. They give you two hours to do it. I don't think you're entitled to two hours of my time, and I don't think I have to prove myself to you. You want to ask me questions, whatnot, but here's the thing. You want to go interview somebody who... I understand why they do it. But if you give the same application to... Or same interview process to 100 different people. I have years of experience. I have... For God's sake, I have an algorithm course. <laughs> I um, I have a YouTube channel. I've worked on... Mul I've probably released 10 courses on multiple platforms. My content is in the process of being leased on multiple platforms. I clearly have an understanding of what I can do, and I can show you various things I've worked on. I won't. I have no interest in taking your algorithm challenge. If that disqualifies me, fine. And God, even worse than those things, although I'll do them because they're quick, are the quizzes. People send you these quizzes, and <laughs> and the stuff. Not only is the stuff outdated which makes me worry about the quality of developers I'd be with with companies, but there's just not even good questions. Um, happy to report I've accepted a junior front-end dev job related st uh, stated my journey on August of last year. Good for you, King Ferno. Any advice? Just make sure you keep the job, man. Study every day for the first three months. Learn the stack inside and out. I've heard of very experienced developers sending companies an invoice for the time to take their test. Honestly, it's... <laughs> I charge, so outside of work, say you, like, Avalanche, say you wanted to do a, a mentoring session with me, you wanted you wanted to spend an hour with me, I would charge you $150 an hour. And they're like, here's two hours, of, we want you to do two hours. Nah, I'm good. First off, it's not relevant to my job most of the time. There's the occasion where you need to fix something. Secondly, you're not entitled to my time like that. And unless I absolutely want to work at your company, like, and there's probably, like, if you're not, so the thing that gets me every time is like, hey, you want, you're a, you're a Fortune 500 company. You get sort of the pick of the litter. Okay, I could see how you could send that out. Um, you know, you're one of the big four tech companies, sure. But you're like Joe Schmo's web design shop? Come on, man. Yeah. Which is why, by the way, so I practice what I preach, right? When I interview candidates, um, I don't care what frameworks you know. So, like, my work's hiring right now. We're looking for JavaScript devs. Um, when you interview with me, I don't ask you about Angular. I don't care if you know Angular, um, which is what we use. 
What I'll ask you is JavaScript. I'll ask you fundamental questions. And if I give you an algorithm problem, I give you something that you should be able to solve with your eyes closed. So I might say um, I need you to I need you to find if a value is in an array. Uh, I need you to tell me if this is a palindrome. I need you to you know return all numbers that are evenly divisible by seven up to two thousand. Oh my god, this guy needs to get off. This guy's a, a Google and Microsoft. Uh, on, on that Google and Microsoft dick, man. <laughs> uh. Yeah. And I'll tell you why I even think they're out there. One, a lot of developers are bad, so I completely understand why they do it. Two, because they went through it. They had to go through it, and they think you should too. That's it. Do Fortune uh, 500 companies also ask algorithm questions? It depends on the company and organization. Um, a lot do because they get so many applicants. Do I have an entire prep course slash video? I have two courses designed to help you get prepped. My latest course, the 100... Uh, front end interview question challenge, which goes over a hundred front end questions that you should know, and then my uh, second most recent course, which is the one hundred algorithm challenge, which is going to help you prep for some of those whiteboard problems. Uh, hi, Dylan from Munich, Germany. Have you heard of digital marketers who switch jobs to become a developer? Um, I mean, I'm sure it's happened. I don't. I wouldn't say that's something that happens every day. I can see what could happen is like, oh, hey, you, you start getting, you start diving into, you know, once you start getting good with technology and the web, it's natural to pick up other things in the in the future. Um, uh, how do you know if you're a bad dev? <laughs> you know, <laughs> if you if you don't know the answer to that, you should be very worried. And that doesn't mean you're full of yourself, but like you've put it either you've put in the effort and you've put in the energy or you haven't. One th it's I'm gonna grab a root beer. Yeah, it's Would going from digital marketing to front end be an easy transition? No, there's no overlap. I've been stuck in tutorial purgatory for about a year and a half, going away from tutorials. Yeah, you got to build something. What makes a bad developer? Coding style or inability to use Google and Stack Overflow? A um, couple things. One is quality. Uh, there, I would say the majority of developers complete the first year 10 times. They never actually take the time to learn principles. They never take the time to uh, to level up. Uh, they, never, they never take the time to learn things like testing. They do the bare minimum, and they copy and paste stuff off Stack Overflow and just change what they want and never even understand it. And it's pretty, it's pretty apparent. Uh, another thing is they never have built anything themselves. So, like... I'm all for, like, I just used a plugin for something today, um, a package for something, but um, that's because it made sense. A lot of people just use it for everything and think they're a developer, and then it's, <laughs> you say, okay, I need you to build a modal, and never in a million years do they think they could do it, because they never have. They just go and download a modal. <laughs> they add it to their app. Um, you know, if you don't stay up to date on your technologies of choice, that's something that I'd be very worried about. Um how do you feel about CRUD jobs slash positions? I mean, like building CRUD apps? I mean, I've built CRUD apps. I think it's a great junior level role. Great way to get your feet wet. You know, something to to learn. Uh, 
I'm 20 at my first dev job, been 99% maintenance for 70, seven months now, and I have to work in Angular JS. How long should I stay before leaving? Um, so it sounds like you're working on a legacy web app and Angular 1. Uh, seven months, I think you're good to go. I mean, it's time for you to... It's time. For, so what I would say is go pick up TypeScript and go pick up Angular. And while you're doing that, go ahead and apply and go look for a raise. Here, have some money. Mano Rose with $1. I appreciate that. Or $2. dollars one nine to 9 I appreciate that, man. Thank you very much. And he's got the cat. I like the cat. You know, I have three cats. so And two dogs. And a girlfriend. I support them all. <laughs> um... But yeah, when it comes to development, a lot of people just don't even take the time to learn their language of choice. And like, like I'm a JavaScript developer. I could, I could teach you JavaScript, and I could teach you good things about JavaScript. I could teach you things to watch out for. I could teach you best practices. People go and don't, don't ever learn any of that. Masvidal, <laughs> Dude. Jorge Masvidal. Oh my goodness. Fastest knockout in UFC history. Damn near killed Ben Askren. Ben Askren said that he didn't know where he was till he was in the hospital. Whew. Ben Askren's had it rough, man. He... he he got the hell beat out of him with the uh, Robbie Lawler fight and pulled off the you know controversial win. And then Jorge Masvidal comes out with the flying knee that no doubt uh, his boy, his, his Cuban brother, uh, taught him. Yeah, Matt, go ahead and dip, man. Oh my goodness! Yeah, I I don't know I don't know if uh, um, Yoel Romero taught him that or not, but it, it's kind of funny to think. Uh, but he completely practiced it and planned it, and he re they released the video showing him prepping the flying knee before. <laughs> Dude, that was awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's one of the things that kind of sucks about living on the East Coast is all those fights are really late for the pay-per-views. And so I never stay up late enough to watch them, which then means that I, I miss them. Uh, and I just sort of get the news after the fact. Masvidal's calling out McGregor. McGregor's not fighting Jorge Masvidal, man. I think we all know that. Do I work remote? About three days a week. Um, two or three days. Can I tell you how unimpressed I was with One Punch Man Season 2? Like, it was just the most mediocre thing ever. Yeah, right now my schedule is pretty cool. Um, so we're still building out my team, so there's not really all that much reason for me to go in the office. So uh, Monday... Wednesday and Friday, typically I go in the office, but I leave at lunchtime, and I work the rest of the day remote, and then Tuesday and Thursday I work completely from home. Um, so I get to beat out that traffic and whatnot. What's going on, Connor? I'm good, man. Um, just uh, enjoying life, man. My friend's cousin is 41 and considering getting into web development with no experience. He asked me if he's too old. I told him to go for it. What do you think? I mean, I don't think anyone's too old. And, you know, I think... I think what I would say is you have to really go for it. And hopefully he has the time because at 41 he probably has a wife and kids and they have to be on board if he's going to go for it. 
Uh, what's the pre- pre- perspective pay for someone our age that's starting out? I'd say somewhere between fifty and sixty-five thousand is a reasonable starting salary. Um, you know, I started at sixty-two. At three months, I was at sixty-seven. Um, you know. Yeah, my first roll, I went to 62, then I went to 67, then I went to 75, then I went to 105, then I went to 110, then I went to 115, but then counting bonuses, it's like 130, 140. Um, so once you once you start get, getting past 100K, you start, you start getting more bonuses and things like that and additional benefits. And I guess technically I went from 12, $12 an hour to $15 an hour, $20 an hour. Is there a question about scope and closure in your 100 question? Uh, yes, there is. What do you think of John's Jones fight? I didn't watch it. Uh, I heard it was boring. I So I was listening to Chael Sonnen. He made a good point. He's like, if we're saying performance-enhancing drugs, PEDs, and I'm one of the people that believe John Jones is completely on PEDs, I just don't think you get flagged for it twice, and I don't believe the whole um, pr- uh, the dick pill thing, then you have to say his performance is going to go down He's not going to be as dominant without them. So I think what you're seeing is just a less dominant champion. He's still very good. That's why he's winning. Um, he's got a good fight IQ, but I don't know. Uh, ever since he got back, he's pretty much just a um, little, little less uh, explosive. How much time should I work in the office before switching to remote job? Probably until you're a senior developer. Can we see the cats? They're out and about. Let me see. Achilles. You know. Achilles. See if they come. Um. Yeah, you shouldn't worry about a remote job until you actually are ready to... Like, there, there's so much of your career can go so well. What does the average uh, workday look for me at right now? Um, I have stand-ups, I have meetings, and I work on tickets. Uh, I do a little bit of pair programming with some of the devs, um, do some code reviews. Pretty pretty standard stuff. Cats are with April, apparently. Is your current job a lot of dev work? Every job I have will be a lot of dev work until I get into management. Thanks, Alex. Yeah, I've been uh, I've been listening to Josh's stream. I think I've been watching um, a lot of his uh, a lot of his videos lately. Uh, he does trying to learn from it. Like the guy's very successful, and he's um, and he's uh, been getting explosive growth. I'm thinking like, okay, let's see what I can learn from Josh. You know, so he's doing he's doing an excellent job. New oh you mean like greenfield development? That's what you're talking about, Matt. Yeah yeah. Um, I only take jobs for greenfield development. So. As you get into newer technologies, uh, so like I don't work in older technologies because I don't want to do legacy development. I don't want to maintain apps. I don't want to have to deal with someone else's shitty code. Um, so uh, I only do greenfield development. And the way that you can do that, not only will you make more money typically uh, because you'll be working with later things and um, cutting edge, but you'll you'll be working with later things and cutting edge. So yeah, I, I only do greenfield development for the most part. I mean, any any company you jump on there, even if you're hired for a new project, they're gonna throw you in some shit. They have, hey, can you help us with this? That always happens. I use TypeScript mainly now. Why do I suggest waiting until being a senior dev to begin working remotely? Well, there's been some studies to show that it, one, it helps your career, um, in the sense that you're gonna network. You're typically gonna make more money that way. Um, you're gonna 
you know, the first, the most important thing for you. So remote people are the first people to get cut. If you're working remote, you're the most likely to get cut. They don't have to see you in the office. It's not a big deal. They just got, mm, that's it. It's not going to be awkward for anybody. Um, and you need to make sure you get your experience. You also want to make sure that you are out there. Um, you're out there leeching from the senior devs and learning from them and, and maturing in that fashion. And, um, you know, progressing your career. So that's why I say, and until you're at a senior dev level, you should be around other developers. Joshua Fluke is who we're talking about. Yeah, so uh, it's so funny. I saw somebody in one of the chats talking about Dolon and Corporate Josh should have a... Uh, should have a uh, collab. And so I, I had this, when someone said that, I had like the the most perfect um, thought process of a video. And so um, I'm going to, uh, we might actually be going to the Salt Lake area around Christmas. We'll see. And if I do, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit him up ahead of time and see if he wants to do this collab idea with Dolan and, uh, and, and corporate, corporate Josh. It'll be pretty funny. I got a couple ideas. Um, any tips on landing greenfield jobs? You work with uh, the get jobs in the latest technologies, and typically, um, typically that's the case. How much of your job consists of facing clients? <sighs> For the most part, zero. I mean, you have demos and things like that, um, but I mean, part of the reason you have scrum masters and business analysts and project managers is they don't want you around the client. They want other people to handle that. So. It's raining again. Yeah, the thing that cracks me up with about Josh and why I like him is on one hand, he'll spend 30 minutes telling you about how it sucks working for somebody. You should never do it. And then on the other hand, he'll go and answer your questions on how to do it. <laughs> and it just makes me smile every single time. Um, Cause he's not wrong. He's not wrong. There are. Um, and so I like, it's so, it's so interesting. I watched his uh, startup video recently and I think he would have had a better experience working as a dev if he didn't work at startups. And, um, you know, he's doing fine right now. I don't, I don't, with how much money and how much growth he's having, he'll never go back to working for anybody. But um, just logistically speaking, or like logically speaking, he he made this like, oh, I didn't want to be employee number one, two, three, four, five, right? Um, but the thing he hated most from startups, at least from what videos I could tell, was that he was in this sort of stressful multi-hours, like you're doing extra time, you're not going anywhere, there's no room for growth, all this sort of stuff. And um, But you do get a lot, you know, and the pros that you get to do anything you want, start up basically, you get to try a lot of stuff. But the whole you never know when you're going to be out of a job thing, I think that was because he worked at, if you, if you go and you work at like a large corporate company, it's a, as crazy as it sounds, it's a much more relaxed pace. You're not working extra hours because they have the money to hire enough people. There's better benefits and, you know, companies do lay people off, but not as much as startups do. Um, so I think you would add a better experience as a, as a developer, if that's the case. Um, have a good one, Alex. Man. Uh, he's making all his money from YouTube now. Uh, I mean, he hasn't had, I don't know when he's, uh, it's been probably six months or a year or something since he stopped uh, working and, and started doing YouTube full time. But yeah, he's YouTube. He has courses. I'm sure he does some, some paid, uh, one-on-ones and, uh, merch and he has a bunch of stuff, but yeah, he's, he's doing great. How's it going, boss man? 
Yeah. I mean, I've been watching Josh's channel for, uh, God, I don't know, man. Maybe like, since he had like 10,000 su subscribers, it's been, I've been watching him for a minute. I've always liked his content. I've always liked his personality and I've always liked how straightforward he is and, and honest. And I, cause I think that's, that's something that should be valued. And he's given great advice. He gives, honest to God, half the time he gives either the same advice I'd give or better. <laughs> and I'm, I'm man enough to admit that he he um, he does an excellent job in breaking things down. Yeah, he's doing great, man. I wish him nothing but the best, and I think I think he's helping a lot of people, which is uh, really important. Which is why he's he's seen such good growth. What's CPM like for... Is CPM uh, per thousand? Uh, let's see here. I don't even remember how to find CPM in my analytics. But uh, it's pretty high if I remember correctly. So uh, my CPM is 21.32 for my playback CPM. Um, so education channels are pretty high. Um, gaming channels I hear are pretty low. What's, what's your gaming channel CPM? I love your content, Dylan. Your drive keeps me motivated. Thanks, Coast Sphinx. Have you used Helmet JS outside of Free Code Camp? No, I haven't. Hi, good night, Andre. <sighs> yeah, so gaming channels have really low CPM. All right, guys, I'm going to go have a uh, dinner and whatnot. I appreciate you all. Thank you again to the uh, one donator, donate $2. That's helping me get to my goal of uh, saving money for a um, to pay this house off or for an investment property. Um, you know, I really do appreciate that. And uh, if you're interested in my latest course, the 100 Front End Interview Questions Challenge, where we go over everything you should know to be prepped for those technical screens, there is a link in the description you get it for 10 bucks. So is my algorithm course you get it for 10 bucks as well. So with that being said, guys, I wish you all a wonderful Thursday night, wonderful weekend, and I'll see you guys next time.